In this video, I show you how to optimize the transition state structure for a very simple chemical reaction. So in this chemical reaction, this hydrogen atom approaches this H2 molecule. So this atom will form a bond with this hydrogen in the middle, and this bond will be broken. So in the product side, you still have a H2 molecule and a hydrogen atom. But what's the difference? Well, the difference is this. This hydrogen atom now becomes part of the molecule. And this hydrogen atom now is a free hydrogen atom. Now let's look at this Gaussian input file. I'm using four processors, percentage and proc shared equals four. Uh, they share the memory. And then pound sign. Uh, this has to be put here in front of the commands. And then space. We're going to do optimization. Uh, These three keywords are the options for optimization calculation. TS stands for transition state. Uh, calc all. That means for every single optimization step, we'll calculate the vibrational frequencies. And over here, no eigen test. Well, this is just to prevent the premature termination of the calculation. Uh, this is because Gaussian will terminate the calculation whenever it found two imaginary vibrational frequencies. Uh, transition state contains one and only one imaginary uh, vibrational frequency. However, sometimes uh, during the optimization, I think it's okay to uh, temporarily have two or even three imaginary vibrational frequency because we want the uh, Gaussian algorithm to uh, get rid of the unwanted uh, vibrational frequencies instead of having this calculation uh, being terminated. Over here, frequency, that means after the optimization, we're going to do one more frequency calculation. Uh, this is important because a transition state structure has one and only one uh, significant uh, imaginary vibrational frequency. So this is to ensure that we find a transition state. And integral equals ACC2E equals 11. Uh, this is regarding the accuracy of the two electron integrals. So the threshold for the accuracy of two electron integrals is 10 to the power of negative 11. Uh, the default is 10. Uh, B3LYP is one of the many density functional theory methods. Uh, it's fairly popular and at the same time, uh, disliked by many computational chemists, uh, only because uh, um, people tend to just use B3 LYP without really uh, having justifications. Now, be just only because of its popularity. Uh, U means unrestricted. That means uh, we don't have to force uh, two electrons to occupy the same orbital or have the uh, same uh, spatial wave function. So this means unrestricted. And GEN, that means we're going to enter the basis sets for all atoms uh, in a more general format. So right here, I'm entering this 6-31 GD basis set for the hydrogen atom. Uh, what if your system contains hydrogen and carbon atom? You can just include carbon. What if you have oxygen? You just do that. If you want to use the same basis sets for these three different kinds of atoms, uh, you can put them in the same line. If you choose to use a different basis set for another type of molecule, well, you'll have to just enter uh, that atom here. Uh, let's say if you have a transition metal atom, and then you need to enter the basis set over here. Uh, for example, I'm going to enter LANL2DZ basis set for uh, palladium. So this is how you do it. Okay, but of course we don't have palladium in this simple uh, reaction, so I just deleted uh, that palladium. And now gas equals Harris. Uh, gas equals Harris, this is very important in the part. Uh, this is because when you do quantum mechanical calculations, you need to make an initial guess of the molecular orbitals. However, it's very hard for a human being to make that guess. So you need to tell Gaussian, let's use the Harris algorithm to make an initial guess of the molecular orbitals. Uh, what if you did this uh, transition state search using a different method? Well, and if you did that, and if you created 
a so-called checkpoint file. That file contains the molecular orbitals from that calculation. And then you can say guess equals read, and then read molecular orbitals from that checkpoint file. All right, but if you do that, you need to specify the uh, path and file name of the checkpoint file that contains the molecular orbitals. SCF equals uh, YQC, self-consistent field calculation. Uh, this is just an algorithm to expedite the convergence of the uh, self-consistent field calculation. Um, simply put, this is just to make sure uh, your uh, calculation uh, will be done successfully. Uh, empirical dispersion. So this is just to include uh, a in empirical calculation of the dispersion force. Uh, we're using this uh, formula, and BJ stands for uh, Becker-Johnson parameters. Uh, D3, I think it means um, dispersion version 3. Uh, over here, uh, these two lines are just a, a comment of the calculation or some notes uh, for the users or readers. So I'm doing this transition state search. I'm about to do the calculation on this uh, web interface. So I'm putting this web interface here. And uh, this is the reaction. Again, I mean, you can just uh, write whatever you want to write here to remind yourself and the readers of this input file. Uh, another blank line here. So make sure you have a blank line here to separate the commands and your comments. And again, another blank line between your comments. And over here, this is the charge of your system. I'm about to do a neutral uh, H atom and a neutral H2 molecule. So overall, the charge is zero. Uh, two, this means the spin multiplicity is two. The spin multiplicity is equal to the number of unpaired electrons plus one. Uh, we have one unpaired uh, electron on this side, one unpaired electron on the other side. So, well, the spin multiplicity is one plus one. So we put two here. Uh, this also means a doublet, a doublet, because that electron can have alpha spin or beta spin. Two options, doublet. Now I need to enter the positions of all atoms uh, in the transition state structure. So you may uh, ask, you know, why do we have to have this, you know, coordinates or positions of these atoms? Shouldn't this Gaussian do the work for us? Yes, it's true. The Gaussian uh, program will uh, optimize the transition state structure, but somehow you still need to provide uh, Gaussian some initial guess of the positions of all atoms as well. So just like here, uh, you need to provide a guess of the molecular orbitals. You tell Gaussian, uh, why don't we use this Harris ma uh, algorithm to make the initial guess? And over here, well, somehow you need to provide uh, some initial guess of the structures of the system or the positions of all atoms. Uh, the first atom, hydrogen, okay, we don't really care about the uh, position of the first atom. You can put it anywhere. So uh, there's no number after this hydrogen. The second hydrogen, I need to specify the relative position of the second hydrogen atom here. So this means, well, this atom is bonded to the first atom. The distance is 0 0.9 angstroms. Okay, now the third atom is bonded to the first atom. The distance is 0 0.9 angstroms. And then it's not enough. This is not enough because if you just specify that this hydrogen is bonded to the first atom with a distance of 0 0.9 angstroms, this is not enough because uh, somehow you did not specify the relative position of the third atom relative to the second atom. So you need to do that. All right, so over here, we're going to uh, define the bond angle. So to define a bond angle, you need three atoms. Atom 3, atom 1, atom 2. 3, 2, 1, the bond angle is 180 degrees. So over here, we specified the position and relative positions of the hydrogen atoms. 
another blank line, and over here, this is a basis set. So H for hydrogen atom, space, zero. Zero means for all hydrogen atoms. And then we use this basis set. A basis set is just a set of mathematical functions that's used to describe the uh, waves of electrons. Over here, uh, this is just a, a standard format, uh, star, 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 star. And then at the end, you need at least one black line at the end of the file. Uh, just to be sure, I usually have two blank lines because uh, you will see uh, on Linux versus on PC, sometimes when you do blank lines, you know, when you enter, you know, they um, are slightly different. They can be slightly different. Now I'm going to show you how to run the calculation on this web page. All right, I'm going to just copy paste this web page. And uh, I'm going to do this. And if you do this, you'll see we have trouble finding the site. This is because uh, this web server is behind a, um, a VPN gate, virtual private network gate. So we we'll have to run a VPN software. It's global, uh, global pro uh, protect uh, for Central Washington University uh, employees and students. We'll just use this. Okay, global protect. Uh, this is just to uh, prevent uh, the web server from malicious attack. All right. So it's connecting right here. Uh, it's a little bit slow. All right, uh, this is my account. So I just entered my uh, username. And because I somehow, you know, log into my own account before, so this uh, global protect is now connected. I'm connecting to the network on campus. Uh, welcome to the Central Washington University Virtual Private Network. So now I'm going to uh, do a copy paste of the website again. And now you can see uh, I can get something here. Now we can log in, uh, log in here. And then you can see I ran the calculation already. But I'm going to run it again. New job. Uh, execute input file. So I'm going to just copy paste uh, everything here to this web interface. All right, and then I need to give it a name. I'm going to call this uh, H3 transition state, so H3TS. Choose engine. I'm going to use the Gaussian software. And uh, we have only one server here, so I'm going to use Manda. And we'll just execute job. Uh, it's running here. It's running here. And if you uh, pay attention to this one, this is four. I'm using four processors. And now you're looking at the CPU time here. So it took actually only five seconds, but the CPU time is uh, 21 seconds because I used four CPU, um, four CPUs for the calculation. Now, if we click here, you see the structure of the transition state. And if you scroll down, you get some other information. Uh, optimization, uh, those are the options, calc or transition state, no eigentest. Uh, you can see uh, our command line is included here. And we have stoichiometry, we have symmetry. This is a point group. This is actually D infinity uh, H point group. Uh, and then we have the energy. Uh, this is done with the B3 LYP method. Uh, this is zero point vibration energy in Hartree. One Hartree is 2625.5 kilojoule per mole, and also we computed the internal energy enthalpy and Gibbs free energy of this transition state at the room temperature and one ATM pressure. We also have heat capacity and entropy of this transition state here. Now let's look at the uh, geometry optimization sequence. So one, two, three, four. Uh, this is our initial, the energy of our initial input. Remember, we have an initial structure. Uh, this is the energy of that initial structure. 
And then after four steps, we get our final um, transition state structure that's optimized. And if you look at these two uh, numbers, they are the same. That means the optimization calculation is done. Uh, we have the same energy uh, after the fourth step uh, compared to the third step. And don't worry about this uh, rotational constants yet. Uh, I'm going to talk about this uh, in the future when we are talking about the rotational uh, spectrum of molecules. And now the partial charges, all right, 300 atoms. This one actually is in the middle, okay, of the transition state structure. This two are slightly positively charged over here. So this one in the middle is slightly negative charged. Okay, vibrational frequency, and over here, as I mentioned, you need to see one imaginary vibrational frequency in a transient state. So this is the imaginary vibrational frequency. Unfortunately, uh, in Gaussian output, uh, they did not use uh, letter I for the square root of negative one. They simply put a negative sign here, but keep this in mind. Well, it's not negative one. It's the square root of negative one. It's I here. And then you can actually see this uh, vibration. I'm gonna just click here so that you can see the vibration that corresponds to that number, that vibrational frequency, negative 500-ish uh, 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 inverse centimeters. And now you can see this vibration, all right? So when this one approaches this three, so this is actually the reactant side. You have a molecule you have a H2 molecule formed between two atoms, one and three. And now if you look at the uh, product side, so two and one can form a bond as well. And then three becomes the free hydrogen atom. So that's the product side. So if you look at this vibration, this vibrational frequency connects the reactants and the products, all right? So it shows you both the reactant structure, the product structure, and also the transition state structure in this animation, all right? In this animation. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, the vibrational uh, wave number is negative. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not negative. It's 324 I inverse centimeters, where I is the square root of negative one. So in a transition state structure, you have one imaginary vibrational frequency.